Never thought I'd see one of your kind here. Truth be told, I'd almost forgotten that you still existed. You're seen so rarely these days. By my subjects, by myself, and even by the humans you're supposed to protect. But it does stand to reason that the one time you do show yourself, you only do so to squash my fun. That isn't very nice now, is it? And here I thought that creatures like you were all about being nice. Clearly I was mistaken. I would watch your tone if I were you. After all, in spite of our moral inequalities, we are on a level playing field when it comes to the powers we possess. Oh, really? You won't stoop so low as to speak with a demon? Well, I hate to break it to you, sweetness, but you have already broken that self-appointed rule several times. Twice just now, and once rather loudly before. You really ought not to lie. I thought that that was morally reprehensible. It's only considered that way if it harms someone else. Funny. I never thought that creatures like you could see in shades of grey. How very interesting. Now why must you be so rude? I'm not trying to bait you into a fight. I don't even have to try with creatures like you. You do it all on your own. You believe that you're always so superior to everyone else. You believe that you have the moral high ground. I hate to break it to you, sweetness, but you don't. Not anymore. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that you have fallen even lower than a demon such as myself. You have fallen even lower then the creatures you are taught are your enemies. Oh, but I'm not mocking you. I am simply stating a rather obvious fact. What do I mean? I thought that you weren't going to speak to me, sweetness. Are you changing your mind so suddenly? Oh, really? You think that you'll find it amusing to learn how a demon thinks? Well, then, I suppose I could be nice enough to allow you to be amused. However, I don't think you will be the least bit amused by this. You, your brothers, your sisters, your siblings, and everyone like you. You vanished when the world needed you the most. There have been plagues, one of which is still going on. There have been wars, there have been natural disasters. There have been so many tragedies, so many deaths, so many illnesses. And where were you? Oh, come on now. Don't give me the silent treatment. Answer the question. It wasn't rhetorical. Where the hell were you? You were waiting? And what exactly were you waiting for? For someone to call out for help, specifically to you? For someone to call your name? For someone to say the right thing or make the right offering to you? You waited. You waited for whatever it was. It never came. 
and you assumed that because of that, you didn't need to help. You assumed that it wasn't your job to help, when in fact, that is exactly what a creature like yourself is made for. Have you ever heard the term coined by humans? Guardian angel? What about avenging angel? Have you heard of those terms? Or have you been away long enough that you've never even... Very good. So you have heard those terms. What about this one? Angel of death. Angel of mercy. Only one of those terms applies to you and your kin. And I don't think you'll be quite pleased with the answer. You have become angels of death. You abandoned people when they needed you most. Humans refer to themselves as angels of mercy. Did you know that? They take it upon themselves to determine others' fates. They take it upon themselves to release others from this hellish world that you allowed to exist. You left these people to us. You left them to the whims of demons. And do you know what happened? They became desperate. They became so utterly helpless that they turned to demons for help. Because we can save them from themselves. Demons did not create this world. A few might have provided a bit of inspiration, but we did not create this. It gives us no pleasure watching so many humans die for no reason, watching so many suffer for absolutely nothing. We punish people for their greed, for their selfishness. We punish them with unrelenting pain. We punish them with an eternity of suffering. We punish those who hurt others for their own amusement. We punish those who are like you. We punish the bystanders who can do something, who know they should, who would face no consequences for helping another person. But they look the other way. They turn their backs on those who are truly in need for no reason other than to keep what they already have. They watch as others die so that they can keep their comfort, so that they can continue to live in the lap of luxury. We punish people like that, but we do not seek to punish those who suffer for this. They call upon us. What you witnessed just now, that boy who called upon me, his mother, have you any idea how she treats him? He is never good enough for her. He is punished because he struggles. He struggles because he can't help it. He doesn't intentionally cause mischief. He doesn't get into trouble on purpose. He struggles because the universe decided that he should. And his mother 
punishes him for that. He called upon me because he had been calling upon you for so long that he finally gave up when an answer still wouldn't come. When help still wouldn't come. He called upon me and he asked me not to hurt his mother, not to hurt him, not to hurt anyone else. He called upon me to ask what he was doing wrong, what he had done to deserve this. Perhaps you should have stayed to talk with him. I'm sure you could have given him an answer. It might not have been one he liked, but you could tell him exactly what he did to deserve this, to deserve being ignored by you, to deserve... to deserve all of the suffering that you watched with your kin. You should have stayed and watched as his face fell into absolute despair. You deserve to be punished for what you have put this entire world through. You deserve to be punished for that. However, despite what you have been told by your Creator, I am not entirely without a conscience. I am not entirely unforgiving, nor am I entirely unjust. I am willing to offer you a choice. I can see the guilt on your face. I can see that it eats you alive, knowing that all of this is happening because of you and your kind. I know that you were doing as you were told. You were made to do just that. You were made to obey. However, if you were to disobey, you would be different, wouldn't you? You would no longer be one of them. You would become something Rather like me, actually. And then you would abide by no one's rules. No one's but your own. You could go whenever you wished, wherever you wished. You could help people in any way they ask you to, so long as you want to. You could give people a chance. Well, you're awfully pious, aren't you? I wonder how long it will take the guilt to eat away at that. No matter. For your sake, I hope it's before the world burns. Oh, come on. We both know what's coming. And trust me, sweetness. No matter what you believe right now, no matter what your creator tells you to believe, something big is on the horizon. And soon, you'll see things our way. <laughs>